I'm doing an update video. We're gonna talk about the best thermal drones of 2023. Here at the, we're here at the end of 2023, it's almost December, and we're gonna do an update. So if you wanna hear what I believe are the best thermal drones of 2023, stay tuned. All right, so technology is constantly evolving. We are two years after my initial video, and there is a whole new set of thermal technology available today for the drone, for, for the for, for the drone industry. So let's talk about what those are, and this is going to be an update video on that. And we're going to talk about sort of some of the features that I take a look at, and I'm going to make my sort of overall recommendation. So let's just dive right in. Okay, so here are what I believe are sort of the best uh, suite of thermal drones available on the market today. Let's talk about the features first. I'm doing an update on the features. If you haven't seen my original video now, now. Now, the videos are embedded within a full thermal course. That thermography course, basically Thermography 101, is available for Blue Nose franchisees, or it's available through Pilot Byte, um, and I'll leave links down in the comments. So you can see this whole course that sort of talks about the fundamentals of thermography, but this is sort of the one slide that really needed an update in that course, so I'm just putting this out there. But the whole course um, is available on those platforms. Okay, so let's dive right back in. So let's talk about the features. Features, resolution. Resolution is basically the amount of pixels on the sensor array. The more pixels, the better. Uh, in this case, you can see that they're all the same, which is wonderful. This is like full resolution, ther um, you know, thermography, which is wonderful. The next one down is radiometric. Radiometric, they're also all radiometric. This makes me so happy. As a level three thermographer, I can't tell you how many times that people were like, is that one radiometric? Is that one radiometric? Now, what does that mean? That just means that it has, the sensor has been calibrated to be able to give you absolute temperature. So you keep, the eye can actually, it's saving an image and that image is not qualitative. It's not just an image of temperature differences, but I can pinpoint using spot measurement tools, area measurement tools, um, lots of different tools within the, within the array that I can do either while I'm actually flying or in post-processing and in, in, in the analysis phase. And I can pull temperatures from every single pixel. That's radiometric. The next one, um, which is kind of important, is flight time. How long do these fly, right? There, there's, these seem to be almost around the same, um, but, there, but there are obviously some differences here. Um, and obviously these are, by the way, under ideal conditions. Um, your mileage will vary depending on where you are, what altitude, what are the winds like, what is it, yeah, I don't know, what, what is, is mercury and retrograde? There's a lot of things that affect flight time. Um, transmission, the next one down, that one is obviously also under ideal conditions. What is the transmission path, the distance, ideal transmission distance between the controller and the, the payload or the platform? So these are under ideal conditions. If you're with buildings or there's other obstructions or trees or hills or mountains, all of those things are gonna affect your transmission range. And obviously, helpful reminder, make sure you keep the drone within visual line of sight. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. RTK, RTK, now now this one's important and this one I'm just gonna cover again like I did in, 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 my, in my course. RTK I think is really important for precision. We're talking about precision and control. If I'm connected with an RTK enabled drone to an RTK network, I'm able to basically maintain positioning on a drone within centimeters. So if I'm operating close to buildings, I'm operating close to any of sort of obstruction or in confusing areas, I wanna make sure that I have RTK available. So that's another consideration for you. If you don't need it, you're operating out in the wide open and, and, and you, you have no problem with a little bit of drift in your drone, not having RTK, not an issue. Next one is weight. The, the next one, weight, obviously, you know, these are all, you can see, they go from 920 grams to 3.8 kilograms. Now, there's not a huge wiggle. These are all fairly smaller portable form. These are all smaller portable form factor drones. We're not using massive things that weigh 10 kilograms that you have to lug around. Um, there are there are some great tools in that category that were in the existing video two years ago that still exist today, that are still great tools. I just want to introduce you to a new list. So the next one is IP rating. That one essentially is, um, does it have ingress protection? Can I, you know, does it have a dust, rain, snow? Um, how, how well does it handle the elements? So now all of them except for one have some sort of IP rating, essentially the amount of time tested um, that it can be in the elements um, and still maintain, you know, operation. So they, they kind of vary along the spectrum, but they're usually, you know, sometime between, you know, I mean, you probably wouldn't want to have it operating out in the elements for, you know, days and days on end. You probably want to dry it off once or twice and then get it back out there. 
Um, there's This is really good IP protection if you're operating in the elements, if you're search and rescue, or you're working with um, law enforcement, and it, 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 this is an important thing, obviously. And then the last one, and probably the most important, is price. Now, what's interesting here is we have essentially three drones that are about the same. We'll talk about them, about the same in price range. One that's significantly less, and one that is arguably significantly more. And there are ones that cost far more than this, and there are some that have lesser capabilities that are far less than this, that are more for qualitative thermography. These obviously are all quantitative thermography. So if you're doing utility inspections, or if you're doing roof, um, you're doing roof moisture studies, or you're doing anything with roads and bridges, um, radiometric is gonna be important. Um, so let's sort of dive in. Let's go left to right, and let's just talk about them. One of the newest ones on the market is created by Teledyne Fleer. It is the Cyrus. Now, I, I, I'll link to the other video. Um, I actually get to fly this. It's a great drone. It is absolutely fantastic. It is full resolution, radiometric, has decent flight time, has a really great controller, has some other features and benefits that are really nice um, for usability. Um, does not have RTK. It's a little bit heavy. Um, has a great IP rating and it's reasonably priced. Right, so there's a lot of things that go into this that that so, but these are the ones that I'm rating it by, and there's some other things that we'll talk about too. The next one is also a Chinese manufactured drone. Now, if you're looking for NDA compliance, or you're looking for non-Chinese drones, you're looking for Blue S UAS. We can talk about those if they're important. Obviously, Fleer Cyrus, U.S. made drone, not Blue S UAS. Autel, definitely not. It's definitely a Chinese made drone. Um, but great capabilities. Now, now the other thing to mention with all these drones is they all have multiple sensors in their payload. So they're not just a thermal sensor. It's typically a thermal sensor and an RGB sensor and, uh, and or a wide and a zoom lens or a laser range finder. There's multiple sensors that are, that are on each array. So this is enhancing the capability of each of these devices, which is really great. So every single one of these have multiple sensors for their payload. The Autel Evo Max 4T, I have not flown this one, but I, the closest thing that, that I've told that it's like, based on sort of the price and capability would be the DJI Mavic 30T, which we'll talk about next. So full resolution, um, great flight time, large transmission range. Um, there's no RTK, which is interesting and of note. Um, not that heavy. Um, so that's, that is a good thing if you're lugging this thing around in a backpack or you know, this, this may be something that is a factor for you. Um, has a good has an IP rating and it's about nine thousand dollars. So this is not a bad choice. Um, the next one, the DJI Mavic 30T. This one, ha, uh, you know, both the the Auto Max 4T and the 30T have laser range finders. The others do not. So this is a, a capability that if you want to know how far something is, up to I think like 800 meters or 1200 meters is I think the, the range on these laser range finders. This may be a core capability that you want, right? If I want to be able to tag where something hot is, and I want to do it with the laser. You may want something that'll be able to tag a GPS location, you know, about a kilometer away um, with from the device. So something to consider, considering the prices are about $700 off, right? Um, also can fly for about the same amount of time. Uh, good transmission range. It's much heavier. It's in, it's in the same range as like the FLIR uh, Cyrus. They're about the same in heaviness. Um, good IP rating, um, a better IP rating than the Autel EVL Max T, and it's, like I said, the almost exact same price as the Fleer Cyrus. Now, one additional thing with the Mavic 30T is you can get a dockable version. Now, that's interesting. If you're doing things that are um, within utilities, like DJI, like docks are becoming a very popular topic. So if you're looking to do something with docks, there is a dockable version right now today of the DJI Mavic 30T or the 30 series. So. Something to keep in mind, if you're gonna be doing this, this would allow you to do that with this particular drone. The next one. Now, obviously one of the biggest, most popular uh, drone series out there, DJI makes great drones. The DJI Mavic series for professionals is probably one of the most popular drones or is arguably the most popular drone out there on the market today. And it has been for years. So in our original video, it was the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance. This one, now it's the DJI Mavic 3 Thermal or the 3T. This thing's a beast, right? I, I mean, I fly the 3E all the time. A lot of the, a lot of my viewers like love the Mavic 3 Enterprise. Um, this one basically just has a different payload. Same form factor, same battery, same controller, same everything. And all you're doing is flying a slightly different device. And this one is light, um, obviously, but it doesn't have an IP rating. Does that hurt it? Does it not? It really depends on your operations. So. You have to weigh all of these things, right? So everyone's gonna be everyone's gonna be very different. It depends on what your operations are, where you're operating most, um, what are the price points that you're sensitive to, 
Um, how many of these do you need? What sort of training, familiarity, standardization are you working with? There's a lot of things that sort of go into all of these um, trade studies, yeah, for lack of a better term, these things that you're going to be weighing against. You may have a different feature list than I do, but you have a more expansive list than I do. I'm just covering some of the basics. Obviously, um, bigger drones work better in higher wind situations, but all of these ones here, they operate very well in the wind. The last one on our list is brand new. This is the Skydio X10. So the Skydio X10 has a couple different payloads available, kind of like the 3E and the 3T. The X10 is also a multi-payload system. Radiometric, full resolution, flies for 40 minutes, uh, has a, a advertised much longer transmission range. Um, use RTK, this one also uses uh, 4G, 5G, like 5G um, dongle to be able to operate off of a cellular. Uh, so for for lack of a better term, for unlimited range. So that's something that's interesting. It does have RTK. It also has some snap-on modules that you could use, as does the Mavic 3T and 30T um, and the Evo Mag. They all have sort of you know, uh, bolt-on modules that you can add on that enhance capabilities, speakers, spotlights, you know, things like that. Uh, addition, uh, parachutes, additional collision avoidance. All of these things, it really sort of depends on your overall use case. And this one is by far the most expensive, $15,000, um, but it's also made in the US. Notice the US equipment, more expensive, Chinese equipment, less expensive. In this one, although they're all fairly comparable in capabilities and not that different in cost. So it's getting harder to differentiate. Two years later, after my initial take on this, it's getting harder to pick a winner. So for me, what is my recommendation? My recommendation uh, for most Professional drone pilots, you're going through, you're getting your SUAS level one th uh, thermographer, you're just starting out, you're doing some mapping, you're doing some photogrammetry, you're doing some inspections, and you're just sort of, you're not kicking the tires anymore, you're one step beyond that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend the DJI Mavic 3T for lots of reasons. Most of us don't operate in the rain. You know, weather brings other problems. Um, the IP rating on the other drones don't make them infallible in all weather. Like, don't be fooled. Like, it, it, it is a good thing, right? Being able to operate in all conditions is a very good thing, but it also comes with its own complications. Flying in nice, clear sky blue weather. I mean, I'm here in Denver. I get that a lot, so I'm a little spoiled and maybe a little biased. So being that the DJI Mavic 3T can operate in most of the conditions here where I operate the most, makes the most ascent. I, we fly these form factors all the time. They're, they're familiar, they're small. You can have several of these at the price point. You can buy two of them for one of the other. And in this world, you kind of have to consider um, in the old aviation world where one is none and two is one, having two of these, one as a backup, might be very interesting. And you may also already have a compatible drone, a Mavic 3 Multispectral, a Mavic 3 Enterprise, um, or just a Mavic 3. They all use the same batteries. So that is another thing for me. I like to standardize, consolidate, simplify. I'm a huge fan of simplification. So I hope you found that helpful. We're here at the end of 2023. I hope you and yours have a wonderful holiday season. And who knows what's around the corner in thermal drones, but I will be here to bring it to you. Y'all have a good one. Bye now.